My fellow citizens of the world, ask not what America will do for you, but what together we can do for the freedom of man. I spoke to an American veteran of World War II from my own little American hometown who had been in Leyte during the war. This veteran showed my father and I a book of 60-year-old black and white photographs, old pictures of Leyte that he had taken with his own camera at the end of the war. And this veteran, his memories of Leyte are surely memories of a war-ravaged, war-torn island. But I myself, of course, had an entirely different experience. I knew the same beaches in this veteran's old war photographs, but I knew these beaches as peaceful places. I was a Peace Corps volunteer in 1962 in Group 3. We were assigned to Dulag Leyte, and all members of our group were assigned to both Leyte and Samar. One of the questions that comes up is, how was my Peace Corps Volunteer Service in the early 1960s different than the Peace Corps Volunteer Service these days? Of course, it's hard for me to know because uh, I was only there for those two years, although I later spent another five years as a uh, Associate Peace Corps Director in the Biko region. But I can say for sure that the uh, volunteer assignments we had were probably less defined and more general than the more specific nature of Peace Corps volunteer assignments that followed behind us. My name is Bart Fouts, and I'm a United States Peace Corps volunteer assigned in Tanawan, Leyte. I work in the agriculture office in the Municipio. Um, my counterpart and I, who is a Filipino, he's an employee at the Municipio, we, our primary project has been to establish a fish sanctuary in Tanawan's municipal waters. I am a CRM volunteer with the Department of Agriculture in Kaibiran, and mostly I've been doing environmental education. The big project that we've done at my site is a overnight camp for high school students. I am a high school English teacher in Barongan, Eastern Samar. What I do is co-teach the second year English classes and co-teach the first year remedial reading program. The best thing that I am doing is making learning fun for the students. One of my most beneficial work projects was conducting an eight-day education tour on Hamonhon Island for farmers and fishermen. My counterparts registered fisher folk during the day, and in the evening I gave presentations about climate change and the benefits of healthy coral reefs. More than 1,100 people in eight barangays were reached, and the tour was a great team-building experience for my counterparts and me. One of my projects is working with a fisher folk association called Omangat. They requested assistance to improve the management of their fish sanctuary, so together we're working on community education, infrastructure, strategic planning, and skills building for the management team. The management team has been trained in coral reef and management assessment, so now they can actually gauge the progress they're making. My primary assignment in Leyte was livelihood development for young entrepreneurs, but as I made more and more Filipino contacts, we discovered that I could also assist various organizations with projects that involved computers and computer software. My first memory of the Philippines was the first night we arrived, we got off the bus at the hotel and we were signing up for our rooms. And walking around were LCFs and TCFs handing us 
bottles of off lotion and suntan lotion. Uh, over the past two years, I've come uh, to realize that this is the reason why they gave it to us. I got sunburns and I've got mosquito bites. I've had the lotions to help protect me, but ultimately it has not worked. <laughs> um, Peace Corps gives me so much protection. I can give myself so much protection, but ultimately I have been hurt. I have come up against hurdles. I have come up against challenges. Um, but I've overcome them. I'm still here. I'm still loving my life. I'm still enjoying everything that I'm doing. We lived on the bottom floor of the home of a retired school official who was the father of the principal of the school where I worked. And that worked out pretty good. Uh, he had fixed up the downstairs. that They lived upstairs. We lived downstairs. There were three of us. And uh, we had a small bathroom a uh, intermittent water supply and bedrooms and a place to study. We had no electricity and no sewage system, but it worked out pretty good. I think my favorite memory in terms of my living experience here has been my first host family, my host family during training. Um, it was weird when I first got there. It was kind of awkward at first because it was like an older an older like Nanai and her husband and then their daughter and then her daughter's two sons. So it was pretty much just me hanging out with a 10-year-old and a 7-year-old for three months. But by the end of those three months, like, I don't know, I haven't found a relationship equal to that yet here. Like, it really felt like they were my little brothers. I still live with my host family, and they are awesome. One of the very cool things that I've had the chance to do is I've watched the little girl, one of the little girl in my house grow up. So she was one year, one year old when I moved in, and now she is two and a half. So I've gotten to watch her start walking and talking, and I have very extensive conversations with her. So when we first arrived at our host family's house, there are four family members, um, the mom, the dad, and then they have two daughters that were 10 and 11 at the time. And when we showed up, everyone was ner nervous, obviously. It was the first time we were meeting. But our host sisters literally hid from us. So um, it took a long, it took a while, but uh, now we're great friends. Right there in the Mendoza family's living room, both my American mom and my Filipina mother, they started lecturing me together, tag team style, taking turns both of them giving me a hard time about my dangerous habits. You know, said my Filipina mother to my American mother, Scott goes outside when it rains. He goes out when it's raining. I try to stop him. He's going to get sick, but he doesn't listen. And then my American mother joined in. Yes, yes, she said. And he walks on the street listening to music with those headphones. So this is my host mom's favorite story. When we were in language um, class, a lot of times we'd learn like sentences or like conversations. And one of the conversations was, was about how to barter. And so we learned how to say like, how much is this fish? Oh, that's very expensive. Like, that's too much. How about this price? And so the first day I learned it, she like took me out into our, our road right in front of our house. And she like got a fish seller to come up. And she's like, okay, go. So I asked him how much it was. And it was the right price. It was like a normal price. And then and I said, oh, all right, now, how it? Come on, come on. And he got really confused. He had no idea what to do. And she just thought it was the funniest thing ever. So she always tells Whenever that. anyone asks me about my favorite cultural experience here in the Philippines, I always say, hands down, it's the Mañanita. The Mañanita is an early morning birthday serenade. And at my office, there's a Mañanita singing troupe, aptly named The Morning Dew that meets at 3.30 a.m. and travels to the house of the day's birthday boy or girl. I even warned my family back in the States, watch out, I'm bringing this one home with me. During my time there, I became a ninong, or godparent, I learned to cook classic Filipino foods like pancit, adobo, and gulaman. I had many conversations in Wari Wari, helping me both with my work and around my community. And of course, I learned to dance the cha-cha, karacha, and amanudo, the traditional dances of the Wari Wari region. Americans should consider joining the Peace Corps for the same reason that we considered joining the Peace Corps in the 1960s. 
and uh, as one of the first groups, and that is as a way to move outside the box, outside of our cultural confines in America, and make a difference in the world uh, in a much larger sense. With the support, with the guidance, with the resources that I've gotten from Peace Corps, I've been able to do work that wouldn't have been possible through other organizations. Um, and my life has been ultimately changed. The past two years, um, I've seen myself grow not only professionally but personally, and my future is a lot different than it was two years ago, um, and it's for the better. Everyone knows that there are people who don't have running water and there are people who don't, you know, who live different lives than we do at home, but it's very different when you live, when you live around it. Being an American has given me so many advantages. A good education, fluency in English, optimism, and hope for the future. These are the gifts that I have to give to my students. I am here to give them a brighter future and to inspire them to make a better tomorrow for their country. As a, one of the first Peace Corps volunteers in Leyte late in the 1960s, I've never been able to return there, so I've never uh, been able to see what signs of progress or change have occurred there. But I do have a, uh, a lingering sense of gratitude for all the people of Leyte, and I would like to use this occasion to express my thanks for the hospitality and understanding and love and, uh, and welcoming feel that they, they made, they extended to me and also to the fellow volunteers in group three. Uh, to me, that was invaluable. It's one thing to uh, join the Peace Corps and, and embark on the adventure, but it's quite another thing to be made to feel welcome and wanted. Filipinos have been very, very kind to me. You have easily opened up your homes and your hearts to me. You have been very willing to share whatever you have to give without reservations. I would like to thank the people of the Philippines for their hospitality. Even those who don't seem to have much as far as money goes are usually over generous with what they do have. I had a wonderful ride in the last two years and I really cannot wait to return in a few more years. Paghina hinai, ayo ayo, ajo ajo, bye bye. Salama ka ayo. <laughs>